With India's goal of reaching a $1 trillion digital economy just three years away, the fifth edition of Digital India Summit was the platform where industry leaders and decision makers came together to discuss online shopping and insurance, two sectors that have been transformed by the wave of digitization. Discussing the unprecedented opportunities that widespread internet is bringing to the insurance industry were co-founder and CEO of PolicyBazaar.com, Alok Bansal. Managing Director and CEO of Aegon Life Insurance Company, Vineet Arora and Founder and CEO of PolicyX.com, Naval Goel. Insurance, it's a subject that we rarely want to talk about and we, I mean, let's face it, we don't want to get into the details of that. It's quite unfortunate. So, let's kick off with that only. Alok, first question to you. Insurance, we don't want to talk about that. How do you get people to start talking about that? Is digital helping people have conversations around insurance? If you look at the broad dynamics of uh, how the customers have moved from, say, a rural and semi-urban to urban, from a joint family setup to a nuclear family setup, uh, you know, a lot of people at 25, 30, 35 are looking to do their financial planning. Right. And these guys are a lot of time influenced by what's happening in other sectors and they want to be in control of that decision. And that decision, a lot of time starts again from understanding the product, mm which means that they have to do a lot of research mm. and uh, they end up coming to someone like say us mm. where mm -hmm. you know they get a lot more information about that product and yes. uh, they are able to make more informed decision. That's the important part there. But Vineet, are you also seeing some trends change? I mean, Egon's been around for quite a few years. Uh, is it moving from a push product to a pull product? And more specifically, the digital part. How has digital helped uh, change the conversation? I think in the last decade, there has been a, a sea change in the way people look at insurance. And like you said, you know, this might be a good statement to make 20 years back that insurance is something which I don't want to touch. And the inner reason why a customer would do that would be that, A, it's a very high friction product. It's difficult to buy. I'll have to, you know, call somebody. He will have to explain something to me. And then I have to go for, you know, medical checkup and stuff like that. So it's a very difficult product to buy. So yes. that was one reason why people would say, let me think about it. Mm. And second was also that, you know, the entire concept of insurance would be a little bit of morbid discussion to do at home, so people might, you know, want to avoid that. But in the last 10 years, through education, through, you know, so much of media and, and what, you know, even I would say some credit to us, what we did when we launched our first uh, term insurance plan online, mm. is that it led to a big awareness of protection. Right. And protection became as part of big discussion and then assisted by, you know, aggregators like Policy Bazaar, Policy X, mm. is that, you know, they started to take this education to the very next level mm. and that brought in a lot of change around what, how people see insurance and how they compare insurance. Now they, they look at insurance in understanding what is the best product for me, they do their own research and you can see this from your interaction with customers. You know, they, they come and do their own research, they talk to you with information and not just asking you what they should buy. Right. Now, well, I want to speak to you first about the general insurance space. Obviously, it's a little bit easier for people to buy policies in the general insurance rather than a life insurance, which is a longer commitment. What are some of the major categories, major uh, general insurance products that India is buying online today? Uh, what's happening is, uh, you know, India is buying a lot of health insurance today. Uh, earlier also, you know, insurance has always been a large, large market. More than 3 lakh crore of premium is collected every year from the, uh, by the insurance companies. But, uh, you know, most of the youth, uh, they were not even concerned about insurance. But uh, earlier, the perception was that, the, you know, it's very difficult to get a claim or, uh, you know, buying insurance is very difficult. Researching about it is very difficult. But in the last five to ten years, what we have seen is it's, it's very, very easy to gather, gather information about what insurance plans are available. It's easy to understand. And therefore, we are seeing a lot of people who are entering into health insurance segment because, uh, Earlier, you know, people used to feel that hospital jana hai, 
you know, reimbursement claim lena hai and all that, uh, which, which is a lot of documentation, a lot of processes involved and all that. And now what people know is that there are cashless claims available, there is, uh, you know, health insurance. Uh, a lot of yeah. uh, people have faced a uh, huge, uh, you know, cost in terms of health treatment and all that. And they have seen people getting insurance uh, uh, claims. Mm. So, and taking claims has become a lot easier. So yes. we are seeing a lot of traction in health insurance in the general insurance segment. Mm. Motor has always been there because motor, uh, you know, is a compulsory product which everybody has to take. But health is something that we are seeing a lot of penetration improvement. Okay. Uh, Nawal, how are you seeing uh, this specifically the health insurance sector um, evolve in the years coming because of the uh, impact of um, technology by way of you know wearables that can monitor your sleep? Maybe will there be you know the apps where we have to log in our food intakes? Can that data? Can you foresee that data being pulled in by insurers to offer better products at uh, cheaper rates, or maybe even at more expensive rates for, ma for the matter? Right. So uh, you know, insurance is all about uh, segmentation of customers. So definitely, if somebody is uh, you know doesn't have a healthy lifestyle versus somebody ha having a healthy lifestyle should not pay the same premiums, right? So a lot of companies are uh, doing these kind of segmentations where they are looking at customer lifestyle, life cycle, food habits and all that. So what is happening is, uh, you know, uh, insurance is a game of large numbers. So you can always do the segmentation that you want to. Because if you talk about segmentation, the, the perfect segmentation is a segmentation of one customer, right? But that is not obviously commercially possible. So. Uh, a lot of companies are trying to answer your question specifically. Uh, you know, uh, for example, Aditya Birla Health Insurance recently launched a plan wherein if you uh, run for a certain kilometers every day, the, your next year premiums uh, fall by, say, 20, 30 percent. So these kind of plans are being launched. Uh, but there is still a long way to go. I would rather say that, you know, the focus should still be on uh, improving the penetration and segmentation would be probably the second step wherein, you know, uh, uh, premiums can be decided based on these factors. Vineet, one of the biggest pain points in insurance is the claims. So it is me, like Alok was saying, the trust factor. So it is me trusting that here's the money I'm giving to, for example, Aegon year on year, and Aegon will give it to me in 25 years or 30 years to my nominees. Uh, the claim pro getting process, how has it become easier with going digital? So it, it's definitely become easier in terms of intimating a claim to an insurance company because it's every insurance company now offers that uh, digitally. Uh, what has still not become easier and will become gradually with you know the ecosystem developing is the entire concept of a death certificate etc coming in and you know people able to understand that. But what companies have started doing, you know, like what we do is that right from day one we start to engage the nominee as well. We start to you know send information to the nominee about the policy and about start like this. So so we have nominee cards, we have nominee details. And we do send out communication, obviously with the consent of the policy holder, and mm -hmm. they love it mm -hmm. because ultimately a protection plan is for the nominee. Yes, of course. And that's where, you know, I mean, a small anecdote is that when we did the survey, is that, uh, you know, we spoke to a lot of beneficiaries of uh, term plans, and a lot of them said that I know there is an insurance plan, but I don't know which company, and I don't know what is the sum assured. Yeah. So we said, do you know what to do mm -hmm. when, you know, something like this happens? And the answer was, no, we don't know. And, and we realized that this could, might be the only product in which the beneficiary is not aware of, you know, the benefits of the policy. So we took a campaign on this with our entire customer base and now, you know, so, and I'm sure other insurance companies would be doing this as well in engaging the nominee. And once you do that, you kind of tell them how to, whom to call up. I mean, that's it. I and mean, all you need to do is whom to call up, these are the details, mm -hmm. and that will make your life simpler. The rest, the insurance companies will take over. Thank you so much, Nawal. Thank you, Vineet. And thank you, Alok. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for listening in to us. Thank you so much. Are you an online shopper? Stay tuned for an inside view of the back-end decisions that are shaping e-commerce in India.
online shopping is being reinvented by innovative companies catering to tech-savvy consumers. Leading the conversation on the future of fashion retail were CEO and co-founder Shop Clues, Sanjay Sethi. Head of Business Development and Strategy, Aegon Asia, Curtis Chen. CEO of Zivami, Amisha Jain. Co-founder at Cashcaro.com, Swati Bhargava. Founder and CEO of Hopscotch, Rahul Anand. And Managing Director, Lifestyle International, Vasant Kumar. India on an e-shopping spree, you know, we have seen how uh, the online space has really picked up pace in a huge way. And we will be discussing that and where from here with the eminent guests who are joining me here this evening on this panel. Uh, let me first, in fact, uh, uh, you know, talk to you. Uh, and I, I have to uh, talk about how this entire e-shopping space has become a huge game changer of sorts. Uh, now from grocery to, uh, you know, to furniture to you name it, and everything we are buying online. In terms of 2019, what will be the trends that will, uh, you know, the, the trends that we will see on a larger uh, scale? And I think the lines are now blurring between the online e-commerce, so to say, or offline. And I think a couple of key things. One, I believe, will be there's a huge trend towards omnichannel in the true sense, right? Uh, we want to be where the consumer is. And if she prefers a channel, we want to make sure that we uh, give her a great experience, the right product, the right price. Uh, and hence, uh, I feel uh, that you will see the true omni image uh, versus, hey, I've connected my stores, and I am, I've got inventory available online. Right. Now it's going to be more about parity pricing, unified pricing, experience that is seamless. The second big thing I feel is the whole idea of uh, experiential marketing, so to say, right. where I believe that you know, from a content point of view, the social marketing aspect will become bigger, video content will become bigger. Those are the areas that we see ourselves investing as well. Rahul, if I can come to you on that, how should one really harness the digital tools that are available? Like people are already seeing stuff online, but how do you harness the digital tools in such a way that it benefits not just the consumers, but also companies? So I think one of the uh, unbelievable things about the digital medium, uh, as far as we see it, is it helps us to access hundreds of millions of consumers on a 5,000 to 10,000 rupee smartphone uh, with a patchy data network and limited capabilities. Right? Anyone who has that device uh, now is uh, in our audience and we and using that smartphone we can now forge relationships with that individual consumer uh, as we look at the Indian market and you know we take a step back we realize this is not China or the US it's not homogeneous it's more like Europe there's a lot of regional tastes uh, uh, and uh, uh, regional uh, skew towards uh, consumption patterns mm. and using that smartphone we can now create that relationship not just with the consumer, but render them uh, products that they feel uh, are relevant. So for example, a mom in Gujarat has very different taste from a mom in Chennai. That mom in Chennai may live in Bangalore, the mom from Gujarat may live in Bombay. Uh, and once upon a time, uh, we were very limited with what uh, physical environments could help us do, and we had to solve for the majority. Uh, we no longer have to do that, right? We could really push the boundaries and, and serve a lot more relevant offerings to consumers in a much, much broader, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, target group. Absolutely. We are looking at pushing the boundaries, as you very rightly pointed out. But Sanjay, if I can come to you with that. Uh, the e-commerce space, uh, the expectation is that the revenue from that space will be about $120 billion by 2020. Where are we with respect to that? And how will you know the, the digital penetration really help in pushing these boundaries? The tools are available for the first time to start including Bharat into, into mm -hmm. the mainstream. Uh, there are about 400 million people who have not been, uh, have been deprived, if I would, right. could use the word, from, uh, from both the digital revolution also, I mean, there is some financial inclusion that is happening, but economic inclusion is, is far off. I think what this allows us to do is not just acquire consumers, but also enable uh, a, a very large portion of, of Bharat uh, to, to participate in nation building, um, uh, become entrepreneurs of their own, hmm. in their own way. If I can, uh, you know, get uh, Mr. Vasant on that. Uh, so we were before this discussion started talking about uh, how 
technology can be leveraged in a big way. Yours is a brick and mortar store, you guys are not present online, but in, in the future, what are the trends that will really shape this space and what's your own experience been uh, from lifestyle's perspective? Our endeavor is to use the technology both for the online and offline in terms of understanding the customer behavior, their uh, media habits, their browsing habits, uh, how they do the shopping journey. Today, the discovery for fashion is no longer a brick and mortar. They start online and then they come and search uh, offline to see whether what they want is there or not. So it's important to get the understanding of the online customer right and there are very good tools available with which we can understand the mind of the online customer. Swati, if I can come to you, what's been your own experience and in the days to come and in the months to come, years to come, how is digital, uh, you know, how are you looking at harnessing the data that's available through digital? I mean, we have seen how cheaper data is fueling growth in tier two cities. What's your own experience? So, uh, you know, when we started Cash Crow in India about five years ago, um, so just for some of you who may not know, we are a cash pack website. So we work with um, players like Shopclose, Amazon, Vintra, we drive sales to them, we get paid commission and from that we actually pass cash back to our customers. So people can save on all their online shopping via Cash Guru. And um, what we've seen is that regardless of it being India, a very deal savvy um, culture that we all know uh, about, even in US, UK, people are very uh, crazy about getting deals. So the model has worked well. And the evolution that we are seeing in India is that um, apart from just cashback, something like social commerce has also taken off uh, you know, very well, which is some of our learning from looking at the data itself. So some of these business models uh, we have evolved for the Indian market by looking at the data, by looking at what consumers are buying. We have looked at data and, and figured out is that you know, on Cash Guru, like 55% of the audience mm -hmm. is from tier one to uh, tier two cities and 45% is coming from tier three to tier five. So a lot of the smaller cities are also coming online shopping and in fact ev adopting evolved models like Cash Guru where you're going through Cash Guru to save money as well. Curtis, if you can come in on that, how has financial inclusion also changed this space? Well, perhaps the bigger question is, what is this insurance guy doing on a panel with all these cool <laughs> retailers and retailers? A little fact, right? The, the IRDA says that, that there's a $700 trillion protection gap. Indians are underinsured. Uh, why is that, right? That's because the current methods of distributing insurance just don't reach that far. Even though if there's a million agents, they can only sell to so many people. What's the answer? Uh, we believe that the answer lies in the partnering of folks like here that are on the panel that have built large, loyal customer bases with great data about them and a good understanding of what they buy, how they behave, where they live, with the expertise of insurers to bring better solutions to them. And in, in so doing, take the insured population from what might be about 30 million today, what, where will the next 50 million people acquire their insurance, the next 100 million people. It will likely be through the partnership of folks like this and insurers who work together. Once the ecosystem is ready, it will be easier to reach out to tier two, tier three cities. I mean, do you believe the ecosystem that we have so far makes it easier for, for a company like yours to reach out to, to the people who, who are perhaps not on the platform? Yeah, so I think, uh, I totally uh, believe that as the access and data becomes cheaper, right, and as you mentioned, geo, et cetera, I think the penetration to tier three, tier four is already, we are already seeing it. If you see the mix that we cater to, uh, surprisingly, we are quite heavy on beyond the tier one. But what are the and challenges there? So I think the one big thing I feel which will be an unlock beyond the ecosystem is converting all of this into more vernacular conversation. Because uh, while we build the ecosystem, right, a lot of this has been based on a, on a language which is an English platform. And I feel at the very base of it, most of this ecosystem has to convert itself into something that is palatable for those uh, consumers. At the same time, I think the other challenges are we have to kind of think about how do you simplify uh, the solutions for these consumers. So today, if I, need, if I want to reach uh, the rural India, because we do have products that can kind of reach that part of the world, um, 
the the challenge will be for us would be to solve for from an ecosystem point of view, simplify the steps, take down certain barriers. Because even when we say that all of these systems are there, we have a lot of partners involved, but there are still many hops. And finding that seamless balance across whether it's payment gateways to uh, you know all the different intermediaries that are there and converting that into a language that is accessible or understood by them I think is going to be the most critical unlock here. So on that note we're completely out of time on this edition uh, Many thanks for joining in. Let me thank all my panelists also for taking their time out and speaking to us this evening After a day of enlightening panel discussions and keynote addresses from the trailblazers trendsetters flag bearers and front runners of the digitization wave Digital India Summit 2019 came to an insightful conclusion, having laid down our nation's path to accomplishing a $1 trillion digital economy by the year 2022.